Welcome to episode 3 in the Terrible Movie Collab Season 2, where today I'm joined by my good friend Jacob Martin to talk about yet another asylum movie, and that one is 200 miles per hour or 200 mph. However, is this movie going to break the mould and beat the one star ratings that we've had so far? Well, stick around and let's find out. Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome to the channel, whether you're brand new or returning once again. Thank you so much for tuning into this video where I'm joined by Jacob Martin to talk about the Asylum's 200 mph or miles per hour. This one is directed by Cole S. McKay, who has previously been mainly focused as a stuntman, and he's done a stuntman for at least kind of 300 projects, which I read on IMDb. So that is impressive in itself, and I will give the guy credit where it is due. And this is also written by Funder Levin, who I've never heard of before, but I did find out he went on to start and write the Sharknado movies, if that's anything to go by. And the plot that we have here is focused on a character called Ricky, where once his brother Tom dies in a race, he vows to get vengeance and beat the enemy in a race to take it all and get vengeance for his brother. So once again, I'm joined by Jacob Martin. It's been a while since Jacob's been on the channel, so it's always great to have him on. And yet again, I've given him a terrible car based movie i don't know why i chose the car theme but because we're kind of three movies in now about cars i thought hey let's just kind of throw another one his way so the cast we have here include jazz martin henley jimenez anna marie damara and tommy nash and without further ado guys i've got one positive for this movie and then the rest is absolute trash so let me just throw the one positive out there immediately where Henley Jimenez and Anna Maria Di Mara are the only that's right only saving graces of this movie and at least the two ladies are trying their best with this awful material they're given because this movie guys 200 mph was released in 2011 to capitalize on the fast and furious 5 or fast 5 whatever you want to call that movie which of course we all know was a big hit for the franchise and this was released a couple of months beforehand and oh man yeah, I've got the positive out the way. Where else do I go with this? I've got a massive ton of negatives. I'll touch into a couple of them. I'm going to throw it over to Jacob. But this movie. So there's one point, And I'm going to go into spoilers here, you guys. So if you don't care about this movie or you've never seen it before and you want to avoid spoilers, well, get the heck out of here. Come back once you've seen it. And we'll certainly talk about that. But if you don't care, let's just get into it. There's a part where our officer played by Paul Logan, is threatening to shoot someone. And our character, Ricky, by the way, who has absolutely no charisma whatsoever, says to him, you can't shoot him. They'll know it's a gun. What? <laughs> what? Seriously? What dialogue is that? Like, why would you even write, don't shoot him? They'll know it's a gun. Well, how else are you meant to shoot someone without knowing it's a gun? <sighs> Our main character, Ricky, played by Jazz Martin. I've seen some reviews online when this was initially released. People praising his performance. I would like to say they were maybe smoking some green stuff. I think when watching this because his performance is utterly trash to the point where you spend the majority of the movie with him and he's so unlikable he's got no charisma he's not a likable guy and they make you want to try root for him which i was rooting more for this runtime to be over than i ever rooted for this guy oh man i'm gonna go into a severe rant with this movie but before i do let me hand it over to my good friend jacob and hear his thoughts on 200 miles per hour hi 
Mike and all his viewers. What's going on? It's been a hot minute since I have collabed with you on your channel. I haven't been doing as many collabs since uh, moving to Tennessee recently and going back to school. But when Mike invited me to come back to review a movie for his terrible movie collab series, I could not pass that opportunity up as these are actually fun to make videos. So Mike, what did you ask me to cover this time on your second season of this terrible movie collab series? Well, it seems like you're trying to keep me in the tradition of bad car movies as last reviews you had me on were RPM and Street Racer. This time, you asked me to cover 200 miles per hour which is a movie made by your favorite guilty pleasure studio, Asylum Studios. The studio responsible for such amazing blockbusters such as Bullet Train Down and Top Gunner. Yeah, they love making those rip-off mockbuster movies, and they don't even try on these titles, especially in recent years. Well, this film came out in 2011, and this film was Asylum trying to cash in on the Fast and Furious movies. I think particularly Fast Five, as that was the one that was released in theaters around this time. Uh, I have an interesting relationship with the Fast and Furious movies. Uh, some of them are really enjoyable. Some of the better Fast and Furious movies are just stupid, cheesy fun. However, I do feel like that franchise has overstayed its welcome, and the last couple of Fast and Furious movies have not really been that good, particularly F9, and the new film Fast X, in my opinion, looks really awful to me, and I don't really care to rush out and see that movie, which is a shame considering I like the other Fast and Furious movies, especially 5 through 8. However, this movie, on the other hand, even the worst Fast and Furious movies. Some of the bottom tier films of that franchise, like F9, Too Fast, Too Furious, the fourth film, which are my bottom three. Those movies are, even the worst movies are better made than this flaming pile of nitrous junk. This movie is awful. I knew this film was going to be awful because... It was Asylum, and when I saw the name at the beginning, I'm like, oh, Mike, what are you getting me into? And, oh, man, this movie's bad. The dialogue in this movie is atrocious. I was rolling my eyes, like, every two seconds with, like, the bad line delivery in these characters and uh, even some of the forced profanity in this movie, the way they were so desperate to say some of these swear words just to make it sound hip and edgy and cool, uh, was so was so cringe to watch in this movie. And it was one of many reasons why this film was bad. Uh, the acting, none of the characters are that enjoyable in any way. They're just stale characters, uh, archetypes of better characters in other movies. Like, you can see... You know, when watching this movie, who's supposed to be the Dom Toretto knockoff? And who's supposed to be the Paul Walker knockoff? And who's supposed to be the Michelle Rodriguez knockoff character? And none of these characters are remotely interesting. Like, the performances don't stand out. The acting is atrocious. The dialogue is bad. And the storytelling just does not work uh, in this knockoff movie. Because it just scrapes to bottom-of-the-barrel entertainment. And it does nothing to stand out. And there's just some really bad subplots in this movie, too. That just make the film grossly uncomfortable, too. Like, uh, I know the Fast and Furious movies haven't had the best uh, depiction of women, especially in the earlier film. Like, a lot of the women characters in that, especially the early films, are very over-sexualized. Uh, especially in, like, the first four or five movies. But... Here you have a subplot where, like, the main character's mom is working as a stripper. And the whole time I was like, why, why would you do that? That's such a dumb idea, and it's grossly uncomfortable. You have, like, this, uh, this woman who looked like was in her 50s doing these, like, really sexual dances that made me gross, which was so gross to watch. 
Like, why was this in the movie, and why was this a major subplot in the film? It was awful. And, again, I think I think they were trying to make an edgier knockoff of Fast and Furious, but it fell flat on its face, and it very much hurt the credibility of this movie, in my opinion. And, likewise, there's a subplot where, like, the villain is trying to harass the uh, girlfriend of the main character in that sequence was a little grossly uncomfortable to watch as well. There were just some sequences that just were not fun to watch. I think they tried to make the film a little bit too edgy for its own good, and the film fell flat on its face because of that. Uh, what else was bad about this movie? So the, the dialogue was bad. Some of the story elements were really bad. Uh, the dialogue was atrocious. Oh, no, the visual effects in this movie. I haven't brought up the visual effects yet. The visual effects in this movie? Woo! I'm not complaining about bad visual effects and bigger blockbusters anytime soon, because even uh, the worst CGI in some of the recent Marvel projects look more tolerable compared to this hunk of crap that I saw in this 200 miles per hour movie. Uh... For so, like, you know, you're doing street races in this movie, right? So you think most of, you could do practical chases, right? Where you're driving around in real cars and have some cool stunt work, right? No, that's not what they do in this movie. They, they must not have had a budget for this movie because in this movie, there's shots in this movie where during the most intense parts of the chase, they CGI some of these shots. I kid you not. There's car crashes in this movie that CGI. There's a attempted murder scene that happens in this movie that is CGI. And there's other chase shots in this movie that are CGI. And even apparently they couldn't get they couldn't afford having actual cars drive out. To represent LA traffic. And so you just put CGI cars in this place. <laughs> it looks so fake. It's some of the worst CGI I've ever seen in my life. It looks like something you see in a PS1 video game from the late 90s. It was that bad. And this movie came out in 2011. This movie was absolutely horrible. Although I will argue the uh, bad CGI is hilarious to watch and that's the only like unironic enjoyment I guess I get out of this movie is because of how bad the effects are however that's not enough to say this is a good movie because this is a terrible movie through and through I guess this is why Mike wanted me to talk about this because it's for his terrible movie collab series but it's an awful movie I don't recommend it uh, I think I would only recommend this film if you're on Mike's camp and you enjoy these Asylum mockbuster films, like the guilty pleasure elements and they're so bad it's good movies. If, if you're looking for something that you know is going to be bad and you can enjoy the film for its badness, then yeah, more power to you. Uh, you'll, you'll probably get something out of this movie that I couldn't. I'm not an Asylum fan in the slightest. I think I've only seen like two of their movies. And I genuinely hated both of them. And yeah, 200 mile an hour is no exception. It's an awful mockbuster. Uh, I don't recommend it unless you are out of your way to go see something this bad if you're like Mike. But this is to me is so bad it's bad. I thought this movie was absolutely terrible. A flaming hot nitrous junk crap. It's awful. I gave the film half a star out of five on Letterboxd. And on my 100 point scale, it's getting a 7 out of 100. Yeah. Very awful movie, you guys. I didn't enjoy this film. Thank you, Mike, once again for having me on your channel. I'm sure he'll leave a link in the description below where you can check out my YouTube channel uh, where I do movie reviews, TV reviews. Starting to do more music content on my channel as well. And a lot more live streams. Being at school, I have more time to do live streams on my channel than anything else but thank you mike for having me on once again thank you guys for watching the video feel free to subscribe to mike's channel if you haven't already at mike i hope we can do some more collabs in the near future i won't hog up too much of your time uh back to you mike continue the roast 
200 miles an hour. I love how Jacob says, thank you so much, Mike, for having me on. Uh, Jacob, no offense, man, but why is there a thank you in there? I mean, you should be like, Mike, I'm not thankful for having you on the channel because this movie was awful and you made me sit through this movie to join you for a collaboration. But nonetheless, Jacob, I really, truly appreciate your support, man. And at least something good came out of this. I got a collab with Jacob and uh, he's honestly such a terrific guy. And one of the first friends I ever met on YouTube. And yeah, so such a legend. So please go over and subscribe to Jacob's channel. The link is down below in the description box where he does movie, TV, music rankings and so much extra good stuff over there. And generally one of the nicest people I've ever met on here on YouTube. So definitely go support him and his ventures and certainly help him up as we go on this video on that way to 1,000 subs. That would be really, really appreciated. And with what Jacob said, as I mentioned guys before, I'm going to go into a rant and I completely agree with Jacob. We've got a storyline where the mom is a stripper, but yet Jazz Martin and Tommy Nash, the two brothers, look weird older than they should be for when this mom had them as kids i mean she must have been like 16 having these two as kids or something i mean they look very old and way older especially when she looks like she's in her 50s and she's got these two kids and they look like they're at least in their 30s 35s going into maybe 40s and i was like the age is just unbelievable but we get a side storyline as jacob said with her being a stripper or exotic dancer however you want to phrase the term but they have a storyline with her which just makes kind of absolutely no sense to have in this movie when the whole part of this is having ricky to really try to root for him as he goes up against our villain character and then we have a side storyline as Jacob's Engine where our villain character is going after Anna Maria Di Mara's character Claudia in this to try send a message to Ricky which is kind of like a chase scene on foot but every turn she knocks him out and basically does like karate moves and I'm just like, well, why is this storyline in here? It takes away the focus from everything else. And then on top of this, what makes this even worse, as Jacob highlighted, we have so many car chase sequences or races and we get like specific shots where it's shown where clearly they just kind of come around one corner. It's recycled footage throughout the race where they go around this corner at least three times or so. And then the rest when they're going fast is two animated like PS1 graphic kind of style race where it goes. <laughs> it's so bad. And then, you know, in like kind of the, these movies when there's like severe racing and then you'll see one car kind of do like an emergency stop and they kind of like the car kind of goes sideways because they've had to suddenly break otherwise it would have been crashed into yeah that car is also cgi'd in here and it just it just makes the movie laughable because i actually found out the budget for this movie is two hundred thousand dollars which i mean don't get me wrong that's not a lot of money to make a movie and it just seemed as if the budget went on to have these nice cars in the movie, which, hey, fair enough, at least they're trying to give the aesthetic to the film. But then just instead of actually having them racing, where they do have them shot on like an actual street as they're both racing, instead of maybe capturing those from like a different angle, the same shot, and maybe like make them like zoom past the camera so it looks as if they are going really fast and racing, they use these recycled shots and then in the background of like the driver's seat, for example, as they're going past, you're seeing like, like an edge of a bridge, but then it shoots to the shot where they actually like are and they're on a street with no bridge. <laughs> and it's just like, what? Like, who was thinking of this shot? And then there's even one scene when they're having a race and our main driver, Ricky, he comes around this corner and the camera pans in for a moment and you can clearly see it's a stunt man. It's not even Ricky. And then as soon as it zooms back, it's like Ricky's like... Mm. <laughs> it's just so bad. I mean, don't get me wrong. I will say when I read up on the trivia of this, I know like one of the main cars were stolen during production. So that's obviously not ideal. And, you know, they had to work with what they were given. But there's multiple times throughout here where the cars that we are starting to learn that they're using is actually switched for a completely different car. And I'm just like, 
but we know what car you drive. You wagered that in this high stakes quotations, high stakes chase, and then they changed the vehicle. And then, I mean, as soon as there's like gonna be like a car crash, or as soon as a car crashes, it cuts to a computer animated graphic because they clearly couldn't crash the car, which I get they're expensive cars, but the animation, man, is so bad. I found myself absolutely chuckling and also thinking, Asylum, here I am praising you at times, thinking you're getting a little bit better in your movies and I love these movies and if you guys are new to the channel, I have a love-hate relationship where I love these movies because they're so terrible, but this movie right here is so bad, it's flat out terrible. It is utterly garbage. So far, I thought The Room was bad. So far, I thought Sharkenstein was bad, but I would watch those two movies any day of the week than watch this one again. Heck, Go back on my channel to one of my first ever reviews, watch the Intent 2, the come up. I walked out of that movie. I would rather walk back in that movie than watch this stinker again. This doesn't even belong in the dollar bin at like Dollar General where I've actually heard some people pick this up. Doesn't even belong in there. Doesn't belong in a pawn shop or a thrift shop or CEX here in the UK or HMV. This movie, guys, just honestly, Someone needs to get a little fire pit, find every copy that they can, put them in the fire pit, set that match into there and go boom and then wave it off as that's happening because this is where the movie deserves. So my overall rating for 200 mph or miles per hour is a half a star out of five. So I hope that you've enjoyed this review and there's another entry in the terrible movie collab series. Uh, if you have, Give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel by clicking that red button down below so I can see you again on a future video. And please also go over to Jacob Martin's channel. Go subscribe to him. Go check out his videos. Leave him a comment. Let him know that I sent you and go show him some love and support. And thank you, Jacob, once again for joining me for this collaboration. But until the next time that I see you guys, I'll be seeing you later. To see more content like this, join me over on my Patreon today. The link is down below in the description box. You get access to early videos, my release schedules, you request movies for me to check out. You get a name characters in my books and so much more. Whilst you're also clicking that link down below, if you want to grab some t-shirts as well or some merch, go explore the shop. And I want to give a big thank you to all my awesome Patreons who help support the channel, who also have YouTube channels. Go over and subscribe to them.